Hi, welcome. So now we continue from our Navier Stokes equations for cylindrical coordinates. So we have them here uh, incompressible flow and Newtonian fluid assumptions. So this is in the mass balance, this is in the r direction, theta direction, z direction. Okay, so we have this pipe here. You want to make a few assumptions now. This is a pressure driven flow. And no gravity. Now, of course, the second assumption is kind of unrealistic, but you will see that uh, okay, if let's say the z direction is this way, which is most convenient, we will see that if the gravity is really downwards this way, as you are, as you are seeing the red colored arrow. Then we'll see that our g, what do you call that? The value of g theta will not be zero. The value of gr will not be zero. In fact, it will be kind of a, a weird kind of a, I suppose a sinusoid kind of a function because depending on your angle theta, your gr and g theta will change accordingly. Of course, um, we can just look by inspection that based on the hydrostatic pressure that will determine the pressure profile of um, P, uh, PR and P uh, P with respect to R and P with respect to theta so if this pipe will at rest then you'll have a increasing pressure in this way as well so we are not going to we're going to neglect gravity in this case because we just want a very simple uh, simple kind of a approach to this problem so and of course we also have a flat pipe okay so all these neighbor stokes equation do does look very intimidating and scary but don't worry we'll thin them out one by one so let's look at the R direction first. Okay, so what is a VR? What does it represent? Well, VR is the is the velocity of the fluid going in the, in this direction, right? It's going from the center of the pipe. Is going from the center of the pipe towards the outer edge of the pipe. Now, what can we say about VR? Well, if um, if there's like no, uh, I mean, do we do we see a reason for fluid to flow from the center of the pipe to the outside of the pipe? Not really, right? I mean, for a laminar flow, if flow is just flowing this way, well, and if it's a steady flow, we should not uh, see fluid coming from the center to the outside, unless, of course, there's a leak in the pipe, which we assume there's no leak, right? No leak. So we can just assume VR. Equals zero. Now that's very important because now our continuity equation will look something like this, and then our R direction equation. Since VR equals zero, here is VR, here is VR, here is VR, here is VR. So we're going to take all of these out. Okay. So that's the art of you know cancelling stuff out. VR equals zero also means this term disappears. This term disappears. Okay, I believe this is an R. I made a typo here. Okay. But in any case, this also disappears. 
All right. Now we look for that. Look at this. Making one simple assumption has thinned down our Navier-Stokes equation from like ten plus terms. This looks like uh, ten terms, more than ten terms to four terms. So half of it has been gone. Okay. Let's make the further assumption. V theta equals zero. Now let's look at that, see whether that makes sense. V theta is the rotational velocity of this of the fluid in the pipe. Alright? Now suppose you have fluid flowing through a pipe and you start to stir the pipe. What do you think will happen? Well as the fluid flows through the pipe, the rotations tend to stop after a while. Alright? If the rotations tend to stop after a while, uh, it means that during steady flow, V theta equals to zero. So we are just solving for steady flow in this case. Pressure driven flow, I'll have it steady state. So if you disturb it a bit, like as in you stir your cup, I mean the cup can be viewed as a cross section of a pipe like coffee in your cup. If you stir your coffee after a while, you notice that the rotational velocity of the fluid in that coffee mug will eventually tend to zero after a very long time. So we assume this steady flow pattern such that V theta equals to zero. Now let's take a look at this. This will be cancelled out. This will be cancelled out as well. And now we are left with these two. Now, as said before, we don't really want to deal with the gravity here. We will just assume this there's no gravity at all. Under no gravity assumption, we will just arrive at this. Partial P partial R equals to zero. Which of course is not true because this thing actually changes with uh, theta if you have a real pipe on Earth. But for most cases, we don't really care about gravity in the pipe. At most, it just has, it will just cause a pressure difference going from the top to the bottom. And we're not really that interested in that. So let's look at the theta direction momentum balance. Okay, so V theta is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five terms gone. So the whole left hand side can be zero. V theta is here, V theta is here, V theta is here. So that can be cancelled. And remember, as we said before, VR is also zero. So we see that uh, assuming these things equals to zero kind of makes our terms very simple. Okay, it goes from 10 plus terms into two terms. Again, this is uh, what we are left with, and under the no gravity assumption, okay, so I'm going to put theta, theta direction, I have to label this right. So this is the actual correct way of writing, but under the no gravity assumption, we will have the same idea. So if this is zero, we cancel this, we multiply both sides by r, we will get this. But, of course, these are the two, strictly speaking, more correct ways of writing it. Let's put a turquoise highlight. Okay, so that's all we have to care about, the r and theta direction. Okay, now with the z direction. That's where things get a little more interesting. So, let's look at the z direction momentum balance. So, 1, vr is 0. Just take that off. 2, V theta is 0. You take that off. 3, well, that is, uh, yeah, that's about it for the time being. Okay, now let's, uh, with this remaining, let's take a look back at our mass balance. Okay, so V theta is 0. If V theta is 0, We'll get this from continuity. V 
vi equals zero everywhere, v theta equals zero everywhere. So the part, the derivative with respect to z is zero. Okay. So let's cancel more terms. This will be gone. All right. What else will be gone? Looks like this will be gone as well. Okay. All right, so that makes it even easier now that we've thin thinned down so many terms. And of course, if it's flat, since it's flat, g z equals to zero. So gravity in the z direction is zero. Now we thin it down. Now we have this equation uh, describing our z direction flow. And we'll make one more assumption under steady state, right? All partials with respect to t equals to zero. So this will be zero. But not only that, we take a look at this term. It has a, a derivative with respect to theta. So we want to ask what about Partial by partial theta v z. So this talking this is talking about the variation of z with respect to theta. You can talk about first or second derivative. But let's take a look. What does a, a varying theta with respect to z mean? Well, varying theta with respect to z means at some at some uh, angles, some special angles, the uh, velocity with respect to the z direction is bigger. At other angles, thetas, the velocity with respect to the z direction is smaller. But uh, during a steady flow, does it make sense? Now, if if one side is faster, one side is slower. I mean. Uh, do we do we see fluids really flow this way, so to speak? Well, that's that's okay. Uh, if we kind of think of it intuitively, if we think about it, is there any reason? Any reason for v? Vz to be a function of theta. So will Vz be a function of this uh, angle? Again, our assumption is no. We assume the flow is symmetric. Okay, this is a very important assumption. We assume flow is symmetric. So no. All right, so this will be zero. All right, so, so there are two more terms we can cancel out by assuming steady state and symmetric flow. So we need to take note of our, our assumption. Assume steady state and symmetric flow. All right, now we have come to a very, very, uh, very good, uh, what do you call this? A very simple equation, okay. So what we are seeing here is that the pressure gradient with respect to the z direction, pressure gradient with respect to the z direction, it will cause the flow to flow in the z direction. That's all that this equation is saying, okay. All right, now we can solve our differential equation. We'll, and then, okay. So we can assume, 
if well, we look at these two equations, there's one with respect to z, one with respect to r. But uh, we can assume the pressure gradient. It, it kind of uh, is constant. Okay. Because it's a constant like pipe. So that equals to You can further assume this is constant. I mean, both sides are, are actually constant because the only way this equation can hold if it's, is if if is when both sides are actually constant because you have a derivative with respect to z and a derivative with respect to r. The only way the, that both sides can be, can be equal is that they are constant. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side are both constants. So the pressure drop, okay, we can relate the pressure drop to the flow profile of Vz. Okay, so let's do some integration. We'll bring mu to the other side. All right, and then uh, yeah, all of these, let's just put it as k. That's my favorite trick. If things get very messy and I don't want to keep writing them, I'll just assume that this is k. k equals to 1 divided by mu del p del z. Later, we can just substitute it back. OK, let's move. Hmm. So we can do two integrations. And then get a general solution. So, if we want to find the integration, we'll have we'll have this term. We'll just integrate both sides by r. So we'll have this term, and we'll have k r d k r square divided by two plus c one. All right. And then we're integrating, okay? We'll be integrating it again. So there's an r here, so we we'll can just we just divide both sides by r. Okay, we'll just have Vz here, right? Vz equals to kr squared over 4 plus c1 ln of r plus c2. Okay. All right, so let's put back, let's put back uh, the expression for k. Okay, so this is our, our general solution. All right. All right, so what can we do here? We need boundary conditions to get C or uh, VZ okay so what's our first bound we, we need two boundary conditions so what's our first boundary condition well firstly we need to know that when R equals 0 okay we look at our pipe again yeah there are two places where the boundary conditions are most convenient one is right in the center of the pipe, one is at the edge of the pipe. So let's let's put it here. 
two convenient spots. One in the center, R, R equals zero. One at the pipe radius. R equals to, let's say, R0, big capital R0. If the pipe it has a diameter R0, that will be the, that will be it. So in the center, let's see, we have this expression. When we, when we take R to be zero, what happens to the logarithm of R? The logarithm of R goes towards minus infinity, and that doesn't make physical sense. If the logarithm of r means it goes to minus infinity, that means this um, this fluid will be flowing faster than the speed of light, which doesn't make sense at all. So, we must have it that vc is finite. It's not infinite, it's a finite number. So we can immediately uh, see that c1 equals to 0 in order for this uh, to occur. Okay. So that's one boundary condition. Now, second boundary condition. At the radius R0, what can we uh, assume? We can assume Vz equals to 0. Why, can, why must Vz equals to 0? Now Vz equals to zero. Um, yeah, Vz equals to zero because of this thing called no slip condition. All right, this is called no slip condition. Okay, so. Um, Let's substitute this in. So r equals to r naught and vz equals to zero. All right. So rearranging, we immediately deduce. Let's c two equals the negative of this number. So we substitute this back in. We can find that Vz is the following. And does gravity actually play a role? Well, whatever we, we assume our gravity to be, as long as the gravity in the z direction doesn't change, the flow profile, you can see, uh, if you look at the z direction uh, Navier Stokes equation, if you look at the z direction Navier Stokes equation, the only time where gravity actually matters is in this term, gz here. Otherwise, it doesn't affect the z direction momentum balance. So, whatever our g theta and gr is, it doesn't matter for our Navier Stokes equation. And since we are since we are assuming there's no gravity anyway, that makes it even simpler. So this is what our VZ profile looks like. So let's check. Just for a sanity check, so to speak. When R equals to zero, what is our velocity? If R equals zero, this becomes our velocity. And you're wondering, hey, why is there a negative sign here? Well, uh, yeah, it depends on the pressure gradient uh, direction. So if there's a negative pressure gradient, means pressure is higher at the start, pressure is lower at the end. This is called negative pressure gradient, right? If there's a negative pressure gradient, where is the flow supposed to go? If there's a bigger pressure at the start, smaller pressure at the end, flow will grow this way. So flow, 
what uh, what this is saying is that flow goes in the direction opposite of pressure pressure increase that's all that this equation is saying I mean this equation is saying that and secondly we can expect a um, we can expect a parabolic profile for VZ because we have a R square term here and this is a constant so in fact our velocity profile will look something like this okay it's supposed to be a proper parabola with VZ being biggest in the center and VZ being smaller as you go out to the sides and it decreases in the shape of a parabola parabola all right and of course we see that this when r equals zero vz is at the maximum point all right so this is what the flow profile looks like for a flow in the pipe so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time